Strawberry Winter, everybody. Alright, Nathan McKenzie here again. Sorry about the light here. Streaming through. Um, but anyway, happy Homebrew Wednesday. Sorry I didn't put anything up last week. I had plenty of content, but no time to do anything. I was just flat out. Sometimes, you know, it's not that. It should be able to put aside 15 minutes to get this done, but it seemed like uh, everything was conspiring against me last week. But anyway, enough about that. So, uh, a wee bit has been happening with me. Um, as you can see, I've done some upgrades to the fringes. First upgrade is a new tap. Um, I got a, uh, from China, I ordered a, um, a Perlic style tap. Um, <clears throat> I was pretty impressed with ordering from China. I ordered it on the 27th of the 12th, 14, and it, it got to me here on the 12th of the 1st. Um, it cost me half the price that it would cost me here in New Zealand. Um, so, all in all, pretty happy. I'm having some issues, though. <laughs> um, a little bit with the tap, and a little bit with... Um, air is going into my beer line. Air is coming into my beer line. I'm pretty sure it's, it's from the liquid out post that the air is getting in. Um, I've changed the... Um, I've changed the, um, words are escaping me. I've changed the rubber ring around the post, okay? Um, they didn't fix it. You know, I, I put a bit of lube on the air, a bit of lube on the, uh, on the connector. She's in tight. But I am getting air bubbles in that airline. I've swapped it round, because I've only got pure cider on at the moment. So I swapped them round and used this tap. This tap poured it fine, absolutely spot on. But then after the pour, there was air getting into the base. I could see, I had a look at it, I opened the fridge up, and there was air coming in from that post. Um, it's not the um, um, the black connector, because um, I swapped them around, and it was doing the same thing with both. So I'm just pretty sure I'm going to have to order another post. It was a second hand one. Uh, obviously the most of those um, type kegs are. So, yeah, I think that is a problem, but I'm also having an issue with this tap here as well. Um, I don't think it's seating quite right. Um, oh, is it going to drip for me? <laughs> Let me show you. I'm going I'm to pour, pour a little bit of cider out, um, and you'll see what I mean, I think. It's, um, especially after the pour, mainly. Um, really, it's a bit of a SOS, really. I think I know what's going wrong with this. I think it is the um, uh, the O-ring in the front here, which isn't connecting with the ball after you finish pouring. It's not shutting off properly. There is a spring in here as well. I haven't taken the spring out yet to see what it's like without the spring. All right, but anyway, let's have a wee pour. I've got a wee, hang on, let me take a drink out of this. It's just getting all the air out of the line there. Bloody frustrating. It's almost like you've got an empty key. Now when I shut this off, can you hear that? If I push that all the way back, that stops. But I've got a, a definite small issue there. Um, I'm going to have to take it apart. And I'm probably going to see if I can get some more O-rings for a Perlick tap. Um, yeah, bloody frustrating, isn't it? Bloody frustrating. So anyway, anyway, I'll, I'll work it out. I'll get there. But anyone, you know, anyone who's there going, ah, I know what's wrong. I know what you got to do. I've got a feeling on that keg I've got to change the post, the liquid out post. So I'll order another one of those and put a new one on. But I've also got to deal with this tap as well. So I'll take it all apart and do it. Because I don't want to, like this is cider at the moment. So, yeah, cider. It's not really my thing. It's pear cider. It's, it's nice, but uh, but I don't want to put, like, the next beer that's going to go on here is going to be an ESB. Um, Risk-free from a Twin Brewing Company there. And I don't want... It's going to be a nice beer, I think. And I, I don't want issues with that tap. I'd like to get it sorted before then. That's me, anyway. That's my shoes. Right. Um, right, moving, on, moving right along. Um, pear Cider. Look at that. That's the Mangrove Jack's Pear Cider. I brewed it up mainly for the wife. Um, 
because she quite likes the pear cider, and it's worked out really, really good. It has worked. It's it's very tasty indeed. Um, they give you with that kit. They give you a, a sachet of sweetener. Now, um, you can choose to use no sweetener, so it's a dry cider, half of it, so it's um, yeah medium. Or put the whole lot in for a sweet a sweet pear cider. I put half in, and it's beautiful. Half is beautiful. I would probably I would ideally probably next time go for just a dry. And not put it in at all. Um, a wife doesn't really like a completely dry cider, so um, so this is a winner for her. It's worked out to be four and a half percent, so it's quite a nice uh, drinkable, easy drinking summer drink, really. So yeah, it's really good. Um, unfortunately, I've kicked the keg on the eight i i bit the i the eight bit IPA. Um, you really know when you've nailed a beer because your friends keep coming around and having another pint of it. So yeah, that one, it's, to date, that is my best um, pale ale. Now I, I struggle with my pale ales as in getting the, um, the balance, um, you know, the hop, hoppy, the hoppiness, um, by adding enough gypsum. So what I've learned and what went right for me this time brewing it um, was just the right amount of gypsum. So five grams of gypsum is ideal. The last time I used about seven or eight grams of gypsum, and that was too much. You could sort of, it, was, it, it unbalanced the beer, it gave it a, uh, hard to describe, but you could sort of, sort of tell that, okay, there was more hot, hot flavor, more bitterness there, but it seemed unnatural, sort of minerally, oh, it's hard to, hard to describe, but, um, but yeah, eight, the 8-bit eight IPA worked out a treat, so I will be brewing it again. It's, um, it's a really tasty drop. Um, and also I'm finding in, with kegging, because um, I'm still quite new to kegging, is that um, two weeks in the keg, beer is ideal. Every, pretty much every beer that I've had or on tap, it's got to, at its best after two weeks. So the first week's carving it up, and then I'm into it, like, like us all. But it's not to that second week where it's tasting the best. So I've really got to lay off them and leave them for two weeks. So I'd rather drink it at its best, because I've probably been drinking a lot of green beer, to be honest. But that's, um, you know, you're learning. We're learning all the time, aren't we? <laughs> so that's, that's that. That's enough about my Keaton stuff. Um, as you can see, my second upgrade that I, I have done is that I've got some um, chalk paint on my fridges. So I'm my fermenting fridge. As you can see, I did a brew last week, last Wednesday, and now I did another Pilsner, or a Cal, um, brew. Um, a tw 24 litre batch, original gravity, 1052, and the yeast that I've used in it this time is the Y Yeast 2278 Czech Pils. Kindly don donated to me by um, Craft Brewing. So thanks Darren, really appreciate that. Um, I ordered some stuff over Christmas and, uh, and he chucked that in as a bit of a freebie. So I really appreciate that. Um, thank you, thank you very much. So that was the push for me to do another one of these because I had the yeast. So um, happy days. Um, it's going, it's been in there for a week now as you can see. Um, fermentation has been slow and that's good. I started fermenting it at 10 degrees and it took the best part of 18 hours to get fermentation to start. Don't worry, if you haven't brewed Pilsners or Lagers before, and you are for the first time, and you brew them at the low temperatures as they should be, don't worry if you, it takes two or three days to get airlock activity. Doesn't mean that fermentation isn't happening. It, all that means is, especially because it's the lower temperature, you're getting CO2 into solution before it comes out of the airlock. So, um, uh, so it's all good. It's all good, you know, it's, you can take, if you want, you can take the lid off and have a look, but you're risking infection, so just leave it alone, it will happen. So if you've pitched the right amount of yeast, I made a two and a half um, litre yeast starter with this, probably, I probably should have probably done three litres to be honest, but I've been quite happy with that growth that I've got in it, and I left it, um, that yeast starter for three days as well. I find with the lager yeasts and pilsner yeasts, my starters, I leave for three days. Ales, I only need about 18 hours and you've got all the growth that you need. 
But for the, these slower yeasts, um, yeah, it takes it takes them quite a while. So uh, yeah, that's anyway my rule of thumb. That's working for me anyway. Um, now I've only just yesterday I upped the temperature to eleven degrees because I was getting airlock activity, but it's slowing right down. So I just upped it a degree, and um, sure enough, she sped up again there. So I, it might have stalled out, or it might not have. I just um, we're probably starting to come to near to the end of fermentation uh, for that yeast uh, or that brew. So um, so better to get them cranking, get them busy again. Um, I haven't smelled any um, sulphur or anything like that out of the airlock. So there's no stressing there. There's nothing. Um, all in all, happy as. Um, yeah, so that's uh, yet again another Pilsner for me. So I seem to be doing this a lot, a lot of Pilsner. I think this is my fifth time I've brewed that recipe so far, so I'm getting, uh, getting good at it. <laughs> but we'll see how this yeast turns out, so I haven't used this yeast before. Uh, to date, my ideal yeast for my Pilsners has been the Bud Bar 2000. That's been really, really good. I, that's been my best Pilsner, has been with that yeast. So. It'll be interesting to see what this the, what the what this yeast is like. So, uh, but I won't be rushing it. It'll be probably another week to ten days in there um, um, before I start lagering it in the uh, in the fermenter as well. And I'll lager it for two weeks in the fermenter before I put it into the keg. Right. So that's that. That's that. Hopefully, any anyone who hasn't done them or started doing them has found that um, a bit useful. That's what I do. Anyway, that's what I found works for me. But um, yeah, always learning, always learning. Right, what else? What else am I going to talk about? Uh, I think I think I'm just about done. Well, that's that's good because I'm just about just up to twelve minutes now. So I don't want to hold you up any longer. Um, and as I say, my next brew will be the ESB um, from Twin Brewing Company. Thanks very much from Paul Woodstein for sending me the recipe, and um, and I got in touch with. Um, uh, Rick as well from a Twin Brewing Company, um, nice, very nice guy, and he's um, he's stoked that people are brewing his recipe. So I'm looking forward to brewing up that ESB next, and um, before I put it on this tap, I'll be uh, I'll have it all sorted out so it's all sweet. So I'm glad that I've got to know got to have all its issues on just a crack old cider instead of a instead of a premium lager or no premium ale I should say. Um, so at that stage I have both taps going. I have my Pilsner and my ESB, so it'll be great, it'll be fantastic. Right, <laughs> enough of that, happy homebrew Wednesday everybody, and um, I know it's a bit just joint and all the rest of it, but hey we got there. Alright, take care, look forward to videos, and we'll see you next week. Cheers guys.